Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Why Not Now? As you know, I am Lisa Marie and this is my amazingly handsome husband, Steven. So, okay, we are coming from the vet. I'll show you a bit around as we're walking and I'll talk to you. So, just came from the vet up the street. Actually, let me just turn around really quick. Um, it was down on that next corner there. This is the barrio of Las Flores in, in Aguas Calientes. For those of you who have been following us, you do know that we have been living here in Aguas Calientes. This is our new home base. We've been here now for a few weeks. We are still, we have a lot to learn about the areas around. Um, we are not familiar with the areas just yet. You guys are going to have to give us some time to get acclimated, get to walking around. Um, the city is pretty spread out. So Las Flores is not too far from, well, probably I want to say about a 15 minute walk from Central, more or less. Yeah. And I went to go pick up some vet medication for my dog. As you all know who've been following us, you know we do a lot of videos about our pups. And you know one of my guys, little Joe Pesci, has seizures. And I have been, I can, I figured I'll tell you a story about um, how difficult it was to find this medication around here. So I'll show you around a little bit first. Um, we have a skate park that's really not too far from here. We actually came to this skate park not too long ago and it was really nice. I mean, kids were out there playing. We'll come up on it in a minute or so. But um, this medication, so pregabol, pre, well, I'll say it how they say it here. Pregabolina 10 milligramos. So that medication is for his convulsions. Um, and for whatever reason here in Aguas Calientes, this medication is much more, they're, they're very strict. So I was down to my last few pills and thinking just like in Santiago de Queretaro where we lived for a year. And when we went to Oaxaca City in Mazatlan, I could just go to the vet and pick it up. But over here it was a little bit, a little bit more strict. And a lot of them were asking me if I had a receta, so a prescription for it. And um, I said, well, I've been buying it all along. And they explained that it's a control drug and it has to be, you know, uh, authorized by a doctor. So, long story short, I made a lot, a lot, a lot of phone calls. And most people didn't even tell me that. A couple of did, which sparked me to realize that something was off. And I finally got to talk to a doctor who seems to be the go-to person to, uh, to actually authorize this medication here. So he didn't have the 10 milligramos, but he had uh, the 20 milligram, which I'm gonna have to cut in force. So if you have a dog that has on a control medication like my dog, who has seizures or something, check because as you can tell here every state can be different I asked the doctor I said you know why is it different here in Aguas and he explained to me that um, you know Senesica which is the one who regulates all of these different things for animals here it's even who you guys will have to go through for your documentation when you're flying from the US to Mexico and you land in Mexico you have to show them your documentation they are actually regulating it so that's what he was explaining to me they're regulating the medication and they're becoming tighter on who's buying it so just FYI to you all. So I'm gonna turn the camera around a little bit so you can get some front views. All right. This right here, <clears throat> this right here is headed over here towards the Barrio of San Marcos. And um, I don't know a whole lot about that right now, but um, Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. I don't know a whole lot about it right now, but um, it's, it's a, a very rich in history area. Let's go this way, that way we can walk by the park over here. It's very rich in history because um, it's a fair coming up in, in April, in Abril. Um, Feria de San Feria Marcos. Feria de San Marcos, yeah. And that's a big fair that's going on down here. It's coming up pretty soon in April. That's a big turnout. I think that's, a, that's like one of the hugest, one of the largest fairs yeah. over here in Mexico or something like that, I think. Um, but yeah, this is the area where we are in right now. Oh, this is the park, This is okay. the park right here. So, so the park, and, and I, I think this is an old stadium. I, okay, well there was a, there's a bullfighting ring not too far from here though, because we looked at it, yeah. but it's actually like maybe a 10, 15 minute walk from here. The reason why we mentioned that is because my husband was doing research and he was he was wondering, you, he kept seeing like a lot of paintings of, of like, of, of like the, gosh, I forgot what you actually call the, the bullfighters, the, there's a name for them, it's terrible, I don't remember, but um, of, uh, 
the bullfighters and even of roosters. And he realized yeah. that in historically San Marcos. Yeah, San Marcos. The fair. Um, let me, the fair. Let me turn it around. Get out of the sun real quick. <clears throat> yeah, the history of it was that when the fair was going on, from what I was reading real quick, don't hang me in for it. They were saying that they did a big show of the bullfight. They had a lot of the big bullfighting arenas going on. And also, I think a lot of the cockfighting stuff was going on as well. And that's what they used to put on the show doing that. The history of that fair, that's what was right. going on. And it's not, and for those of you who know, um, we've gone to, we've seen, you know, horse competitions. We went to uh, uh, charro competitions in Santiago de Queretaro. I'll pin those videos below. We had some friends back there. And, you know, it's, it's hard for us to see. It's not something that we can say we agree with or we don't agree with, but it's part of the culture here in yeah. Mexico. So respect the culture. You know, you can have your feelings about it. Some people got a little bit upset when we talked about this, but it's not for us to judge. It's part of the Mexican culture. culture. If you're living in the country of Mexico, you have to respect the culture. This is the history here. That's the bottom line. That's facts, facts. So, yeah, we, we just left Las Flores, the barrier of Las Flores, like we were kind of on the outskirts of it. Then we crossed over going towards San Marcos. And this is a nice little park right here. Big on skating over here. It's pretty quiet. They normally have like a little pond going where the water's shooting out and everything. Very much, I would say, if you are, if you're looking for affordability, I can tell you, even though um, this is our first time kind of you know, g going through Las Flores, I can tell you that's definitely um, very much a local neighborhood, very much, you know, you're going to be immersed in the culture and you can still be, you know, within a 15 minute walk of Centro if you chose to be. Um, so that could be an option for people. Yeah. And, and when wifey saying affordability, she meaning you'll be paying local prices, you'll be living with the locals, paying lo local prices. Right, it's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to be this up dated pricing where they're going to be all these extra charges oh this, yeah that's hijack pricing yeah but uh we also had seen some a wall of art you know as far as our, our culture so far i think we have a lot more to explore and learn um i haven't seen like oaxaca city there were certain neighborhoods that were very artsy like xochimilco you saw our videos there um so far here I haven't seen a lot of art on the walls but we did see one area which we can take you down yeah that had some art on the wall and uh, as my husband mentioned earlier, the San Marcos Feria is not too far away. About, let me see, about another month, month and a half. Month or two, yeah. And we plan to do quite a number of videos. Maybe we'll do like a video, maybe, we'll see. Or maybe we'll do a video series. Because um, the, the fair actually lasts about close to a month. So we'll have like a series dedicated honoring Aguascalientes by doing the San Marcos Feria series. Yeah. So let me turn around and show you the park real quick. This is where we have nice hotels right here. I think this is a hotel, Fiesta Maricana. No, that's not a good hotel. Don't go to Fiesta Maricana. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you see they have have um, little stores and everything over here. This is the, the San Marcos Barrio on the outskirts of it. And if you hear it's a little bit out of breath, it's about uh, what mid afternoon, and we're not, we're like probably not even into March yet. Honestly, we're like right there, but it feels probably like the mid to upper eight, upper 80s. It's yeah, a warm one, pretty warm, dry heat, so it's nice, but it gets hot. Yep, unless, like, unless you want to be like this guy, he's jogging in it. But yeah, we're gonna keep walking up this way. Um, there's actually a cool clock up here. Where you have this bullfighter comes out. That's what I was every so say earlier. Every every um once in a while he comes out and he, it's like a little he's putting on a show. It's a little um figurine like a little figure. And they changed that figurine because when we did when we first visited Aguas Calientes last year, we were only here for a couple of nights. We did a video at night out showing you the centro, and they, we had a little quick clip of that clock and it has something to do with Christmas right but now they have the actual the, oh my God, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bull it's a, like a little bullfighter yeah there. he has a little red he has a red flag out there yeah the bull it'll come to me later I'm sure yeah as you see they have a circle K over here a couple of little stores you see the shirts have San Marcos Agos Caliente is on it so they're, they're I guess preparing for the fair and watch out for the hazards guys Yep, there's some cars up under there. Cars. Oh yeah. But um, 
the the uh, oxo is everywhere the other thing i'm going to mention to you all is um and it's you know being honest i'm not going to get into full details i don't want to um out of respect and privacy for family but um on my family side someone just passed away and um it was a very difficult situation it was something that was unexpected um and i'm not going to get into details of it but i just you know we are in the process of mourning that loss um we're trying to do our best we look at this as you know our work you know this is a job for us so at the same time uh, we are you know still continuing with our job but please keep in mind that if you don't see us super cheery we are dealing with some personal things we are still performing our work and we have some videos to come after which were we have pre-recorded that were more uh, a couple were informative that will be coming out soon like our um renew for your know, renewal for temporary residency yeah and um <clears throat> also we actually have some some of the neighborhoods that we recommend that are really great in Cadet Santiago de yeah, Queretaro as yeah. well since we did a lot of neighborhood tours in in Queretaro when we lived there so we wanted to share our thoughts with you and give you some uh, recommendations for neighborhoods if you are uh, going to Queretaro because a lot of our viewers f began following us from Queretaro, Mexico yeah. where we lived. Yep, yeah we had those videos coming out and um, yeah flip it around oh i think the bullfighter guy Let's coming out. out let me go check him out oh, real quick you run, run, run. Yeah. up there's a bunch of restaurants and everything going up that way yeah, let me see if he's out nope he didn't come out but and, and, does come yeah out and that clock that clock is connected to the fiesta americana and as you can see you know, it, like my husband actually picked up on this before he said to me you know Aguas Calientes feels more spread out and I was like no it just because it's on it's foreign too but you know he may have a point because it seems very spread out you know you can go to one like one side of Centro and it feels like quiet and just very open like where we just came from but then you can walk 15 minutes and it's like a lot of action yeah and then of course you have North Aguas Calientes which is way, way outward towards like the different. Nissan plant yeah. complete night and day we'll eventually go out that way but it's a drive yeah. um the closest part is probably within 15 minutes but then at the same time further out you can go half an hour 45 and so on and i don't know how far we're gonna go I, but I, we'd have to uber out that way yeah and i think they have like it's kind of like how Caretaro was in Urenquilla. they have the Shadrai selecto they have a lot of certain malls and stuff out there just how, how it was in Caretaro, where you had um um, um with the biggest mall Antilla mall and then you had the heb and all those things over there but yeah, this this is a constant thing you're gonna see over here, over here in the Barrio San Marcos. Oh, that's the rooster, man. Yeah, it's in the he's in the park, it's all over the place. And for those of you who know the proper name for this, you know the 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 person who would fight the roosters and the per, you know for the bullfighting. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be ignorant. I just don't know um, the history on that. But it is, it is, it, the, the roots do run deep here because there yeah. are many statues and monuments also in a park over here, Jardín de San Marcos. Yeah, of the it man is. With the rooster. It is. And uh, let's go ahead and just put it out there again to reiterate. We don't condone any of that stuff, but that's the culture. You can't change the culture. That's what the culture is. And you, you can't change it. But yeah, over here is some nice, nice art on the wall. Yes. Nice art right there, and as you see, what I was telling you, they have rooster fights right there, or a painting of them. Let's walk it down and show. Watch out for that. Looks like a, a skeleton or a la Catrina. No, that's just a skeleton guy. It's very, I'm be honest with you, that's some nice, nice graphic. Like, they somebody can real good at art. But this was this yeah. This was one of the one of the walls I had um, come across over here. It's not a big art scene over here, but you see it every once in a while. I know going further out, um, going towards Santa Monica, it's a, it's a wall where they have um, the bullfighters and like the Toro, like they have all those things on the wall over there. So that's a, it's big over here. It's big over here. We don't know the full history of it yet, but I noticed that it's, it's big. Yeah, over we're here. learning, so bear with us as we learn. We, you know, you know, we're always open to learning, and we always say to you, we're learning every day. This is it. That's further down here, and then off yeah. to the 
uh, left is where we came from, Las Flores. Yep. Then they have a, I don't know if you guys want to come down this way, hotel. One, two. <clears throat> but yeah, we um coming from the vet. We had to call around. Wifey, she was calling around and speaking to all the the vets and everything, trying to find the medicine. And we finally have found it. And um, which is a good thing. It helped us because we Joe Pesci, he needs it. <laughs> he yeah. needs it over here. And in Mexico, um, how they go about things are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But but honestly, even though you know it's more like I couldn't just go in and buy it without no. really having a prescription, so to speak. Once I spoke to the doctor, we were on the phone for at least a few minutes. Uh, once I spoke with the doctor, he and you know, I explained the whole situation in my broken Spanish, and he was very you know kind and he understood me. Thank thank God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it seemed like he was fine with it. He was like, just come down, no problem. But it's more so they are monitoring certain control medications, which I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Yep. So we're taking you guys along with us for one of our daily little um, <laughs> errands. Yeah, that's that we exactly are doing. what it is. And, and as my wife was saying, you know, we're dealing with something personally. So, um, but we, we still doing what we do, you know, bringing you guys content and showing you a little bit of Aguas Calientes right now. Flip back around towards the front. We're gonna head over this way and it's gonna take us deeper into uh, the Barrio San Marcos. We're over here by the park and the church where they have all the food carts that we had shown you guys in our old video. We were out here that night. And for our uh, viewers in Mexico, for those of you from Aguas Calientes, I wanna say, you know, give us your recommendations. You know, I wanna hear from my, from my amigos, our Me Mexicano friends, I want to hear, uh, you know, where, where, what, what should Buenas we see? Buenas tardes, señores. Um, where should we go in Aguascalientes? What should we see? And not and touristy is okay sometimes, but I also want to hear the non-touristy things that yeah. people don't know about. What do you recommend? What should we see in Aguascalientes? What should we learn about the city? You know, uh, what neighborhoods are really, really important to? This? I know a lot of neighborhoods are important, but we want to hear from you all. Yep. All right. Kind of warm out here. Kind of warm out here. Look like this used to be a lot of bars and I don't know clubs. Open up through this way. It's actually pretty chill right now. I usually people will come out um, later in the evening and at night, and I get why because it's probably you know much cooler, so they get to come out and enjoy you know the the coolness the, the the food carts outside and yeah. people selling cotton candies and just people watch so i get it i i get totally get it yep so we're probably going to walk up here over here towards this park and then that's probably going to be the end of the video showing you a little bit of las flores over here aguas calientes as well as a little bit of barrio of santa marcos and we'll be back with you guys in a sec Alright, so we made it to San Marcos, so we, right, we are actually right near Jardín de San Marcos um, and as you can see, I'll flip it around, we'll, you can see that the people are actually starting to get their, their goods, their products, their little carts ready for later on tonight. Before you know it tonight, this will be, have a good, good amount of uh, carts out here, especially on the weekend, yeah. especially on the weekend. So we have to go ahead and take care of some business, I have to pick up some groceries. Um, and make a couple of calls and I will probably insert a clip of maybe what we'll have we have for lunch later on. Something that I think is pretty tasty. So we'll end it as we always do. Live the life that you were meant to live. Keep a grateful heart even when it gets hard guys. And remember, why not now? Alright guys, peace. We're gonna go ahead and make some quick dressing. It's the easiest dressing you'll ever make and I promise you you won't be disappointed. I don't do any measurements. I know what I like and how I like it to taste. So everything for me is a guesstimate based on one full bag of salad and you'll see what else I add in there. I may add a little more olive oil if I want to, but I'll do more oil. Sometimes I, I'm a, I like vinegar, so I like balsamic vinegar. All right, and I have some Dijon mustard here. I may add about, I don't know, one to two tablespoons. Depends on my mood, honestly. Okay, I got some honey. 
which I get this honey from any supermarket and it works really good. I do like maybe one, one and a half tablespoons, it depends again on my mood. So you will not be buying dressing anymore. It's such a waste of money. No, I'm kidding. I mean, sometimes you may want to buy dressing, but quite honestly, when you taste this and you see how easy it is to make, I put a little bit of salt. You really won't want to probably buy dressing. And I'll taste it to see if I like it. That's what I do. If I want to add a little more oil, like will. If I want to add a little splash more of a tiny tad bit more of Dijon mustard or honey, I will. But this for me, I can kind of look at it and see. It works really good for one big bowl of salad because it's pretty flavorful, honestly. And I, I'm almost out of olive oil, but it's okay because I stay on deck with olive oil because it's my best friend. All right, dressing is made. Again, you taste it with your pinky or whatever spoon to see if you like it. As you can see, it's a really nice dressing, honestly. All right, so I got a bag of salad from Walmart. Get whatever you like. I like this one because it has radicchio and romaine lettuce, and I like the purple lettuce, but I don't like the bitter one. I always make sure I don't get the one that's bitter. So I'll go ahead and put that. Usually I use a whole bag of this, but today I'm gonna do a little mixing. So I have some baby spinach as well. And we'll do kind of like a half and half ratio, whatever works, whatever you like. And then I'll go ahead and move on to the chopping. of tomatoes strawberries and apples i usually like it with pear but for whatever reason walmart did not have any pears so apples works just fine for me i also have some leftover pecans which i love to add i'm gonna have to find me a uh, one of those guys that sell some nuts out on the street eventually because i only have a little bit so i'm throwing those pecans in i have some of this lovely lovely cheese which i was mad about because usually i get the walmart one and it costs like maybe maybe like 60 pesos this was like double and i was really ticked off so I was just having a little bit at a time with the salad i was not trying to spend that much but it's good and it's creamy so we're gonna go ahead and add some of that i'll break it up in a minute and it really adds a real kick to the salad with that balsamic and dijon honey vinaigrette oh my gosh you guys have no clue you won't want to waste money eating out on, uh, on a plate at a place that offers you those gourmet salads when you can just make this yourself at home and the best part about it check out these guys down here they love apples too they come running whenever i'm chopping apples and they're already waiting you want an apple papa look at that crunchy okay you want some too that's not yours he eats slow and this one just inhales result I had some leftover steak that I marinated yesterday threw it on top you can do any variation chicken whatever works for you whatever fruit you like blackberries and rovecho everybody wow.